hello all welcome back so the assumption of this video is that you have at least a very high level understanding of ansible architecture and how it connects to the machines or hosts or vms if not please go back to my previous video and you will understand about the high level architecture but if i have to give you a 10 second view of this one you have a control node on the left side and you have a bunch of machines or vms or instances on the right side the control node will have all the necessary details of how to connect to that servers and then manage the configuration on those servers like installing the software or managing the configuration like configuration files or whatever on the right side machines so the way control node would know the details of the servers is through a file which is called inventory file so the inventory file will have the ip addresses of the servers or the group of servers or the host names and the connectivity details or the usernames or all those things that's an important file in ansible and you, you specify the inventory file and you connect to the servers and then you install the software or configure the servers now in the data center world you have a static inventory file where you have the set of ip addresses and you can group them into the you know uh, production or dev sort of a thing and then you can manage them through the group as you can see in this example i just took it from our internet you have this static inventory file and you have the IP addresses and you connect to the servers. So this works perfectly fine in a data center world because the servers are static, meaning you have hundreds or thousands of the servers, but they remain constant for most of the time. They are not scaled horizontally or pretty much like your pets if you want to take the cloud analogy and then they remain same and that's easier to maintain in ansible and that is what is taught in most of the training centers when they teach ansible they teach you this static inventory file and then show you an example of creating a vm and then connecting to the connecting to that vm using the static inventory file and deploying the software there but things will change if you are in cloud let's say you want to manage ansible or if you want to use ansible in cloud as you all know cloud is very dynamic in nature meaning the servers will go down and the new servers will come up so you cannot manage the servers or vms using a specific ip addresses or a static ip addresses now you can also argue saying that yes the ip addresses might not be same but i can use the host i can use the host names or i can use the wildcard entries in the inventory file but the best way to use ansible to manage your servers in the cloud or vms in the cloud is using the dynamic inventory so in this video i'm going to discuss about a simple concept but yet very important concept which is not often taught outside is called ansible dynamic inventory and as part of the demo i'm going to show you this dynamic inventory in google cloud but you can apply the same principle for aws azure or whatever the ansible supports all right so with that let's dive into the demo now for the sake of simplicity i have documented some of the main important steps in my git repo i'm going to paste the link in the description but before that i would also suggest you all to go through this link uh, in the ansible documentation to understand like how the inventory dynamic in inventory works and then how how you can group the hosts uh, or the servers or instances uh, they gave an example of ec2 but we're going to demonstrate the same example using google cloud so as i was saying this is very simple but let's understand few important steps to start with now first thing since you are going to set up the ansible in the control node so ansible has to talk to your google cloud through an authentication to get all the details of the instances right so first things first you have to install google auth so i have i have already done that but i'm going to do it again for the sake of the demo All right, so Google Auth is already installed. Now the second thing is this is not mandatory, but you can create any directory where you want to maintain all the inventory files. Uh, for instance, here in this example, we we're going to create a dynamic inventory file, which I have already created, but I'm going to show you what I have in that. So I have a gcp.yaml file, which is the inventory file and then the service account, which is important and mandatory for your control node to talk to the GCP account. So the important thing for this demo is to understand this inventory file, which will be useful when you're, whenever you are doing this in the real environment. Now the plugin here is gcp compute. Now, if you go back to the 
documentation, you will see the plugin is Amazon EC2 because they were demonstrating the EC2. So you have to specifically give the exact name if you're using GCP for computer. And the project is obviously your GCP project. And the service account is authentication type that we're using to connect to your GCP instance, GCP project. And then the service account file. And I'm sure you are aware of how to create a service account. But if not, please go back to my previous video on how to create the service account and then how to use the service account JSON file and download it and use it here. Now the key group. So basically what we are trying to say here is go to my GCP project. We are telling Ansible to talk to the GCP project and group all the instances based on the labels and zones. So let's say there are a bunch of instances with specific labels. Then we are saying that please group them by labels and then group them by zones. So the prefix will be zone. I'm going to show you when I'm going to use this. And you can also group them by using a specific remote keyword. Like let's say if you have a bunch of Citrix instances that are running inside a GCP cloud. So the most common example of using Ansible instead of like Terraform or something else in cloud is to do some in-place patching or in-place configuration. Now, though we say like, you know, the instances are dynamic, but there might be some instances where you have a lot of Citrix environments that are spun up, that are spun up in GCP cloud or in AWS. Now, in this example, I want to use that Citrix here as a keyword and get all the instances of Citrix VMs and then do in-place patching for those Citrix VMs. So that's why I gave here as Citrix, but you can also give here as Jenkins or dev or whatever keyword that you want to specify. And this is to make sure the permission that you have created before has 755, just in case if you're using a different user ID instead of a root, you can always, you know, access those files inside that OPT Ansible. Okay, so with that, I already have created this directory inventory and then I have specified GCP YAML, which uh, you can copy this, you can copy from uh, the Git repo and I have created the service account. The service account has the permissions of the compute engine, a compute engine editor, meaning I can do pretty much any, anything with the compute engine. So now I'm going to create a, a VM here, create an instance just leave the default as instance one but the label is important because that's what we want to group it by and i'm going to call it as citrix you can either have it in the key or in the value it doesn't matter so now we have set the label as citrix and create so i'll pause the video while it is creating the instance and i'll resume once it is done all right so now the instance is created the next command is to list the ansible inventory through this command but before that i want to show you something else that is important so go to your ansible configuration which is in ansible and you see you cannot edit this through user because um, you know you can only do using root which has the root permission so that's why you see here as read only but the thing that you want to note here is i'm specifying the inventory file as opt ansible inventory gcp.yaml the reason for that is i don't have to specify every time uh, the inventory file go to the top and then in the default section if the line is already there uncomment that and then specify the inventory file now since the instance is created and i already have the service account i'm gonna quickly show you configuration so we can see the details here you have a gcp compute this is the project that i'm using here and the service account file and then citrix okay so now if i do list using my gcp.yaml which is the inventory file you can see i'm getting the list of instances that are running obviously there is only one instance but i got all the details of that there is another important command that you can use here i'm going to show you that command which is um, graph. So what this will do is this will show you in a nice graphical way of 
representing like how the instances are grouped gcp.yml and then graph as you can see here it got grouped by using the label citrix remote and ungrouped which we do not have any ungrouped instances here so there's only one instance and then the zone wise so you have zone wise and then you have label citrix so now what you can do is you can install any software on those vms so we can do a quick test by using by doing by, go, by doing ansible uh, remote minus m ping yes you can disable this as well if you want so as you can see it is able to successfully reach to the instance right and then i don't have to specify the ip address for the instance and if you want to try this i would suggest try to install some software or manage more than five or six instances because you have a free tier account create six or seven instances group them into multiple groups here i've categorized it as a remote here for this group so that's why i was able to ping through remote for the keyword citrix but you can do anything that you want so that's a short demo of using ansible dynamic inventory file to dynamically manage instances in cloud environments i hope this tutorial is going to be helpful for you to enhance your skills on ansible but do practice this with a better example of installing the software and let me know in the comment section if you have any issues while installing or while trying to install the software on the vms so thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comment section if you have any issues but do subscribe to my channel thank you all